Good morning and welcome back to the summer term of 2020. This is not the start of term that any of us had envisaged, but I'm glad to be able to, to talk to you to give you a short overview of the half term that is to come as far as we're able to predict it at this stage. This has been an Easter like no other. I was really struck by this photograph of Pope Francis praying for the world alone in St Peter's Square. It was a very strange Easter at Stonyhurst. Uh, there was no Easter retreat where often many of your families come to stay. And it was also very strange for all of us, I think, not to be able to see friends and family. This beautiful photograph of the college was taken last Thursday. The building was floodlit in blue to support those who work for the National Health Service. Those, including many of your families, um, who look after those who are sick and unwell in the UK. Since we last met, we're in a world of lockdown, a world of social distancing and shielding. In the UK, the message is crystal clear to stay at home, protect the NHS and to save lives. I'm aware that a number of our families have been unwell over the Easter period. We remember all members of the Stonyhurst family in our thoughts and prayers today. You may not have come across the author Chris Lowney. He's a former investment banker who's much influenced by Ignatian spirituality. He's written a book called Heroic Living and he uses a phrase um, of Saint Ignatius, which you know only so too well, to set the world aflame. But this heroic virtue has now taken a new importance in the situation we find ourselves in. We are being pushed out of our comfort zones in every possible way. There have been, of course, many examples of great generosity and compassion during these times. I'm aware from some of your families that many of you are being really helpful uh, to your extended family and also in your local communities, telephone, telephoning relatives or delivering shopping. From the media, I was really struck by the example of Captain Tom Moore pictured here, who has set himself the goal to complete a hundred laps of his back garden before his hundredth birthday on the 30th of April. To date, he has raised over eight million pounds for NHS charities. So our response as a school to this situation has been to launch Stonyhurst Anywhere. This is an online platform which will hopefully deliver the essence of a Stonyhurst education anywhere you are. Stonyhurst has faced many challenges in its long and extraordinary history. This is one of my favourite objects from the collections, a playing card showing the first pupils leaving England for St Omer's in France in 1593. Those first boys are bound to have felt some, um, some nervousness and apprehension. And this is fine to feel this now. This is a new experience for everyone, including your staff and your families. But everything will be absolutely fine and we will come out of this much stronger. From now on, lessons will be live and recorded and this should help with your different learning styles and also with different time zones. We will continue to use Firefly for resources and you're used to that over the last few years, but we will now use Microsoft Teams for live lessons, co-curricular activities, tutorials and even line competitions. For those of you who like fun facts, so far, 1,800 teams have been established on the Stonyhurst account. <clears throat> Miss Hanley and Father Tim have designed a programme of prayers and reflections and talks and our daily examen for us. Pupil chaplaincy groups will continue as normal. And it is also important that we continue to focus on where the need is greatest. We need to do what we must do and what we can do for our families but we should really think of those who are less fortunate than us and what we can do in our local communities and further afield. The Jesuit headquarters in Rome has launched a new website um, to share pastoral initiatives between Jesuit institutions around the world, and we'll be using that too. I sometimes think of Stonyhurst a little bit like the London Underground map. 
There are many different stations where you can get off and find help and support, but everyone has a slightly different route to take. All of the usual um, sources of help and support are available for you, so please do use them. This will be a challenging time, and it's fine to feel a bit worried or concerned. Working remotely is hard. Working from home is hard. Not being with your friends is hard. But we should remember the Easter message of the risen Christ is one of hope, and one of hope in the future. Things will get better, and we will be able to return to Stonyhurst. At this point, we just don't know when. Good luck as you launch yourself into Stonyhurst Anywhere. We will be seeking your views through the Pupil Council and through questionnaires to make this the best experience it can be for everyone. And do remember our school motto, as much as I can. God our Father, as we light this Easter candle, we give thanks for your Son Jesus, whom you raised from the dead. May his light shine in our minds and hearts, and may we share in his life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, three days after he died on the cross, your son, Jesus, rose to new life from the tomb. As we celebrate this great feast of Easter, may we live as children of the light, always bringing the good news of the resurrection of Jesus Christ to those we meet through our faith, our hope, and our love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay, then go quickly to tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee, 
where you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly, with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Today is the start of our summer term, beginning in the Easter season. We have arrived at this principal feast of the Christian faith. But what a journey it has been this year. When we received ashes just over six weeks ago, I'm sure none of us would have imagined how the past few weeks would unfold. I know that many have tried very hard to enter into the spirit of Holy Week through their own prayer and meditation. Those who have accompanied the Lord in his suffering can now share with him the glory of his victory. How does our belief in the risen Lord give us an insight into the times we are living through? I'm pretty sure that by now every single person in this country knows someone personally who has been infected with COVID-19. Many of us will know of someone fighting on the front line trying to save lives. Doctors, nurses, carers and other support staff. I'm sure like me you are impressed with their dedication and heroism, putting themselves and their families at risk to save others. In this way they become other Christs. Most people have heeded government advice and self-isolated, stopping the deadly spread of the virus in its tracks. This too takes its toll on us, coping with isolation and not being able to go out as we would like. Sadly too, we see in the media those who disregard the instructions about social distancing. It seems a crisis like this brings out both the best and worst in people. Yet the resurrection of Jesus can and does shed light on all of these experiences. For the women who accompanied Jesus and his disciples, it must have seemed like the end of the world as they knew it when the body of Jesus was placed in the tomb. The stone was rolled, the guards were placed, a wonderful journey with this man Jesus had come to an end. Mary finds the tomb empty, the stone rolled away, the guards absent, and the body of Jesus gone. She finds Peter and John, and slowly the realisation of what has happened begins to dawn on his friends. John runs faster than Peter, but waits till Peter comes before entering the tomb. Both see the same scene, the cloths neatly rolled up, but the body gone. But it is John who realises the significance of what he sees. The man Jesus, who was brutally executed and buried, is now alive. He has risen from the dead. Their dark thoughts are dispelled. Hope for the future dawns. This start of term, we are not able to gather as a believing community to celebrate these salvific events. But individually, we can live them. We are an Easter people. What has happened to our Lord and Saviour can and does happen to us as well. This crisis will be over. Our freedoms will be restored. We will be able to celebrate Mass again. There is light at the end of the tunnel. However, because of what we have lived through, life in the future will be different. Because Jesus has risen from the dead, we look to the future with new eyes. We can learn to trust. God leading us through some dark times will show us a future where there is hope. Instead of division, each one of us defending our own corner, we can be united in a common purpose. We have learnt to look out for each other and we have enjoyed that sense of all being in this together. Many of us have had more time for prayer and reflection. We feel spiritually stronger. Let's allow the grace of this Easter season to renew us to be ready to face the future 
and the challenges it holds. We are the Easter people and we are ready for God to surprise us again. Easter is light. May each of us carry the light of Easter in our hearts, homes, communities and the wider world. Easter is hope. Our hope is in the risen Christ. May we recognise that he is with us in all our daily tasks. Easter is commitment. This is a time of year when we renew our baptismal promises. We pray to the Lord that he give us the grace to strengthen our commitment to him and to the faith we profess. Easter is joy. Jesus, our saviour, through your resurrection, you fill us with the joy and confidence in your promise of life everlasting. Let us share this joy with family, friends, and all in our communities today to whom we wish the happiness of Easter. At this particular time, we pray for all those who are suffering from the coronavirus and for our service workers. We pray also for the sick and elderly who at this time are housebound, isolated and unable to be with their loved ones. May the Lord grant them all strength, courage and comfort. We pray for the Stonyhurst family as we embark on a start of term, delivered through Stonyhurst Anywhere, may all our members continue to feel supported wherever they might be. Whatever anxieties, pressures and burdens any of us are faced with, may we find hope in the risen Lord and in the fellowship of our community. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Lord, we are your Easter people, and Alleluia is our song. May we always be joyful in the resurrection of Jesus, your Son, and proclaim the good news to the people we meet. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself. May the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service. May the joy of the Lord Jesus fill our souls. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen. <laughs>